नमस्ते वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग प्रैक्टिस कोर्स इन दिस वीडियो वील लुक एट डिसीजन ट्रीज एज इम्प्लीमेंटेड इन एस के लर्न लेट्स टेक अ क्विक रिकैप ऑफ वॉट डिसीजन ट्री डज डिसीजन ट्री इज ए नॉन पैरामेट्रिक सुपरवाइज लर्निंग मेथड इट कैन लर्न बोथ क्लासिफिकेशन एज वेल एज रिग्रेशन मॉडल्स डिसीजन ट्री प्रेडिक्ट label based on rules inferred from the features in the training set there are several tree algorithms id3 is the basic tree algorithm it stands for iterative dichotomizer and it can create multi way trees it is succeeded by c4.5 that converts the trained trees into set of if then rules the advanced version of c4.5 is called as c5.0 that uses less memory and builds smaller rule sets and then there is a cart algorithm which is classification regression trees and it supports regression besides classification as done in the traditional tree algorithm cart however does not compute rule sets let's look at sklearn implementation of trees sklearn uses an optimized version of the cart algorithm however it does not support categorical variables for now for classification sklearn.tree.decisiontree classifier api is used while for regression we use sklearn.tree.decisiontree regressor both these estimators have the same set of parameters except for the criteria used for tree splitting there are parameters like splitter max depth mean sample split and mean sample sleeve Let's look at what these parameters actually mean. The splitter specifies strategy for splitting at each node. It has two values, best and random. Best is the default value used for splitter strategy. Then there is max depth, which specifies the maximum depth of the tree. When none is specified by default and none is the default setting for max depth, the tree is expanded until all leaves are pure or they contain less than mean sample split samples and max step we can also specify an integer value in max step then there is mean sample split that specifies the minimum number of samples required to split an internal node this is again an integer quantity we can also alternatively specify a float number over here by default the mean sample split is set to 2 then there is mean sample slip that specifies the minimum number of samples required to be at a leaf node and by default the value of mean sample slip is 1 it is again just like mean sample split it can take both integer and float values let's look at criteria which is different for classification and regression so criteria specifies function to measure the quality of a split let's look at criteria for classification and regression task in classification we use gini and entropy while for regression we have squared error friedman msc absolute error and poisson as criteria for classification gini is the default choice whereas for regression squared error is the default criteria up to the tree is trained we can visualize it with sklearn.tree.plottree utility it takes the following parameters the decision tree estimator or the decision tree to be plotted which is derived from the estimator then the max depth of the representation if the max depth is none which is the default value the the full tree is shown in the plottree utility then you have to specify names of each features in features underscore names argument and by default uh, it takes none as the value then there are class names where we specify where we specify names of each of the target classes in ascending numerical order and by default this is also none and finally the label where uh, the label we specify whether to show informative label for impurity by default label is also none 
Let's see how to avoid overfitting of trees. Overfitting is one of the issues that tree models can face. There are two strategies for avoiding overfitting of trees. One is pre-pruning and second is post-pruning. In pre-pruning, we use hyperparameter search like grid search CV for finding the best set of parameters. Post-pruning first grows trees without any constraints and then uses cost complexity pruning with max depth and mean sample splits parameters. Let's look at some of the tips for practical usage. Decision trees tend to overfit data with a large number of features. Make sure that we have the right ratio of samples to the number of features. It's a good idea to perform dimensionality reduction using techniques like DCA or feature selection. The dimensional reduction on the data before using it for training the trees gives a better chance of finding discriminative features. Visualize a trained tree by using max depth equal to 3 as an initial tree depth to get a feel for the fitment and then increase the depth. By doing this, you ensure that you have a tree that is that, that makes sense for the data on which you are training. It's a good idea to balance the data set before training to prevent the tree from being biased towards the dominant classes. Finally, use mean sample splits or mean sample sleep to ensure that multiple samples influence every decision in the tree by controlling which splits will be considered. A very small value over here will usually mean that the tree will overfit. On the other hand, if you specify a large number, that will prevent the tree from learning from the data. So in this video, we talked about different SKL and utilities for implementing decision trees. We also looked at how to visualize a decision tree with plot underscore tree utility. We also looked at how to avoid the overfitting of the tree. We will use all these all these utilities in the practical setup in, in, the, in the following collapse.